Well, welcome to Wednesday, middle of the week. I know this is hump day, but uh, man, we're going to get through this together. And uh, man, it's been such a joy to be able to bring these devotions to you. I have been so encouraged by the word. And uh, as we look at the life of Job and learn lessons from a man who knew how to handle crisis. And so today we're going to look at the scripture in Job 17, verse 9. And I know this verse is kind of hidden and tucked away in the story of Job. Uh, I think it's one of the most powerful declarations that Job makes in the middle of his pain. Job 17, 9, the Bible says this, The righteous will keep moving forward, and the pure in heart will become stronger and stronger. Let me read that again. That's just so good. I think our spirit needs to hear this. He says, The righteous will keep moving forward, and the pure in heart will become stronger and and stronger. Now notice in this little verse, there are two states of being and there are two actions, okay? He talks about the states of being. He talks about righteous and he talks about pure in heart, okay? Let's look at those two things real, real quick. Righteous. What does it mean to be righteous or what is righteousness? Um, somebody said that righteousness is right choiceness, the ability to make right choices. I think the Bible is clear that in and of ourselves, we are unrighteous. The scripture tells us in Romans that there is none righteous, no, not one. We are born with this propensity to sin. So even our best efforts, our good deeds, our works cannot achieve this level, this status of righteousness. You know, I've been challenged uh, in recent months. And many of you know, if you come to Healing Place, you know that before every message, I, I bring us through this, this statement. I'm here not because I have to be, but because I want to be. It's not a me thing. It's not a you thing. It's a Jesus thing. Then we say this part, I'm not perfect, but I serve the one who is. I've been challenged on that. Some people say, Mike, when you say that, you know, you're giving people a license to sin. I'm not perfect. It's like you're making light of it. And that, nothing could be further from the truth. I'm simply trying to agree with what God says, that our righteousness is as filthy rags. There's nothing righteous in me. Righteousness comes from the one who is. It comes from Jesus. And so that's why we say that. And I know the Bible says, be holy for I'm holy. But the truth is, there was only one holy man in the entire history of humanity, and his name was Jesus. And it took his sacrifice on Calvary to, to evoke righteousness upon us. When we say yes to Jesus, he washes away our sin, he takes away our guilt, he removes our shame, and then God looks at us as being righteous. I love that because now all of a sudden we qualify through Christ to be righteous. The righteous will keep moving forward and the pure in heart, that's the other state of being, the, the, the pure in heart. What does it mean to be pure? Uh, I guess one of the analogies that I had, you know, you think about gold and gold will go through a purifying process. It'll, it'll be heated up uh, it'll be refined to draw out its impurities. In fact, they say the purer gold is, the, then the better reflection you can see in it. In fact, it, it's, it becomes softer. When it takes out all the alloys and all those foreign metals and substances, the more pure it becomes, the greater reflection you can see. And I think that's, that's how God works with us. When he brings us sometimes through um, some difficult circumstances, it's to purify us. Sometimes he'll heat some things up in our lives, and that's acting as a purifier, a refiner, to take out all of those foreign things that don't belong. And then when your heart is pure, God sees a reflection of himself. Your heart is soft toward the Lord. So that righteousness comes from the sacrifice of Jesus. And a lot of times purity will come through refining, through fire and, and, and turmoil. God says the righteous will keep moving forward. Now notice these two states of being, righteousness and purity, now have two actions. There are two movements. The, first, the righteous keep moving forward. That's direction. And the pure in heart gets stronger and stronger. That's growth. Notice this, righteousness gives us direction and purity gives us strength. Isn't that good? Righteousness will give us direction. Mike, I, I need to know what to do, where to go. Righteousness will set the course and give you direction. Purity will give you the strength 
to get there. When our hearts are pure before God, then we have the strength to get to where we need to be. When we get knocked down, we need to know where to go, and we need the strength to get there. In God, we have both. That's why this is so powerful. And, and Job, he declares this in the middle of his suffering and his pain. You know, he uses the phrase stronger and stronger. That to me implies a progression. I hope that we are stronger this week than we were last week. And sometimes struggle produces strength. You know, Trevor, my son, he's, he's 12, and he's all into working out, man. He's got these little guns. I call him Little Bishop. He thinks he's the bit. No, no, he, he's, a little, he's got a little bit of this, but he don't have it all. And, you know, sometimes I got to just remind him who the boss is, and I put him down on the ground and be like, hey, boy, one day you will take me. But today is not that day. But, you know, it's interesting. The more I wrestle him, man, the harder he is to beat. Because it's like through that struggle, he's getting stronger and stronger. And I, I hope you see the picture now that Job is creating. Sometimes through struggle and adversity, God will use what's coming against us to build a strength and a resolve inside of us. We're getting stronger and stronger. So there's not only direction, but now there's growth. We're moving forward. I love how Jesus took a handful of guys 2,000 years ago. These disciples, they had no resume, very little qualifications. They weren't the who's who of the Christian zoo. They were ordinary fishermen. Some were tax collectors. I mean, they just, you, you know, your average Walmart shopper. And Jesus looked at him and said, come on, I want you on my team. And he took them in all of their inadequacies and he taught them and he imparted his spirit to them. And through these men, the world has been turned upside down. Man, I see God taking ordinary people like us and using us to do extraordinary things for him. The church getting stronger and stronger. Why? Uh, because the pure in heart, the righteous keep moving forward, but the pure in heart are getting stronger and stronger. Got to keep our heart right. You know, got to keep our... And these daily devotionals are a part of that process. So that's some of the observations. How do we apply this? L let me ask you this. Here's a, a practical application. What's an area of your life where you can see that you're making progress? Maybe it was something that uh, was a temptation to you but now, because you, you've gained in wisdom and experience and knowledge, what used to tempt you doesn't tempt you anymore. Maybe some of you came out of an addiction. You had a life-controlling habit, and it used to just dominate you. Guess what? It doesn't dominate you anymore. Maybe some of you, your finances were just out of whack, and you've applied some discipline. You've set a budget. You've made some good choices. You can see how you've grown through that. Uh, just as God wants to grow our children, He wants to grow us. And so I think it's important to look at the areas where you've become stronger and let those things build faith for the things you're fighting. Second question, is there anything, any contaminant, any foreign substance that needs to be purified from your life? Is there anything in your daily routine or even in your relationships that doesn't look like Jesus? If that's the case, identify those things and pray, Lord, cleanse me, purify me. God, take these things from me. God wants you to increase in strength. And he doesn't want to just give you enough to get by, but he's placed his spirit inside of you to give you everything that you need. Our righteousness is given to us because of Jesus, not by our good works. And with Jesus fully present inside of us, we have everything we need to move forward today. Amen? You receive that? Cool. Well, here's one challenge. I want you to think of someone that you know that needs an encouraging word, and I want you to reach out to them today. Make a quick call. Send them a text. Let them know you're thinking about them, and you can be a part of that changing agent in their life too. Amen? Hey, let's all pray. Lord, thank you for today. Uh, God, thank you for this word in Job 17, verse 9. God, you said the righteous will continue to move forward. We will make progress today. God, we will win the moment in front of us. Can't worry about tomorrow, but Lord, we take this day, this Wednesday, and we step forward. I thank you for direction that you give 
to those whose hearts are before you. God, I thank you that you're bringing purity into our lives, into our relationships, God. Lord, so we get stronger and stronger. Lord, we thank you that your hand is upon us. God, we recognize our need for you. And God, we make a commitment today to give you our best. In Jesus' name, amen.